Hi and welcome to our final module in the KX workshop series. Um, in this final module we'll be looking at three main things. The first one being loading data and saving it down. The second one will be a quick introduction to interprocess communication and then finally we'll be looking at some streaming with KDB. Um, so let's kick off with loading data first. So say for example we've created um, a local variable and we've saved some um, data to that variable in memory. So in this example here again we're using our trips data. Um, so I'm doing a select count I and then a sum of my distance by vendor from trips where month equals max months and I'm saving this to the variable call summary and we know from earlier modules we're doing some unkeying here. Um, so to save this to um, a CSV file, I can use the following notation. So it's simply the keyword save, which takes one parameter and that parameter is a file path. So if I just pull out this bit on its own and show you what that looks like, um, <clears throat> you can see here, um, it's uh, preceded with a back tick and then a semicolon, or sorry, excuse me, a colon. Um, and then we have um, this path location. So um, to demonstrate this before I run this cell, I'm actually going to go to that path location and you can do this yourself. So if you just copy and paste your um, URL from your browser, I'm going to take away the end part. So this is just bringing me to my login screen again. And if I go into, so um, JQ, New, JQ Notebooks, you won't actually be able to navigate to, but you see data here that refers to this data uh, folder. And you can see here, I've got this summary csv so i'm going to actually delete that and just to prove what we're doing is working so um we don't have a summary.csv and if i run this um something has happened there or is happening and now i get returned um this output which means this here has been updated so if i go back to this i see summary.csv now exists it was seconds ago and i can take a quick peek at this and i'll see that it's um, a small table. So if we looked at our summary table um, on its own, put in a new cell here, we can see, yep, they look the same. So I know what I've just done is save that down to a CSV file. Um, now to load back in from the CSV file, um, it's a little bit different. It's, it's, it's not as uh, straightforward as using just one keyword. Um, so we need to do a little bit of investigation of our data beforehand to figure out the types that we want um, each of our columns to be. Um, so to do this with the CSV file, um, first of all, we're going to check. We know um, we're using the same summary table as before. Um, so for the purposes of this example, we can just quickly see we've got three different types here, a symbol, a uh, long and a float. Um, but if you didn't obviously know these types, you would have to do some investigation on your CSV file, get a sample of the data and see which of the types um, you want to attribute to each field. Um, so let's say, for example, I know what these are going to be. Um, I'm then calling this variable new sum summary. And this here is my notation to read in a file. So this zero colon part is saying this means read. Um, so this is just saying read in from this file path. And then this here part on the left is the bit that's saying what type um, am I calling each column? And you notice we're using uppercase here. Um, and that's basically casting that column to that type. And this second part of the parameter here is um, our delimiter. So this is saying um, KDB understands when you pass the word CSV that it's saying this is delimited um, as a CSV file. If it was a text file um, delimited by you know a comma or something else, you would pass that in, in here. Um, so running this, I'm after recalling my summary table from this file back into memory. Um, in a very similar fashion, we can do the same thing with JSON. Um, for JSON, again, very straightforward. Use the save um, keyword. I'll just go back here and I'll delete my summary.json file just again. So we can just for our own proving for our own purposes, we know that's all doing what we expected to do. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to see JSON just popped in. And I can see my JSON then with my data. So depending on the file type you'd like to export it as, you can be pretty flexible with that. Um, again, loading in from JSON, this is actually a little bit easier than a CSV. And the reason for that is um, the JSON itself has some idea of data types. So it's not completely um, 
unknown. So we can actually use our load command um, in a similar way to we use the save command. We just pass it one variable um, and that variable is the file path. So if I load in that, um, I notice if we, we had, because the file is called summary, this is going to overwrite your table summary um, with that new, um, the new input from the JSON file. Um, so depending on the name of your file, that's what your name of your variable will become. Um, um, and then we're just having a quick look at the types here again. So yeah, you can see here, this differs to the CSV file. So where we explicitly told it, we want the first element to be, uh, or the first field to be a symbol, long, float. You notice for JSON, it is guessing what they're supposed to be. This is saying I need it to be a character, then a float and a float. So um, a lot of the times with JSON, you then have to go and do some casting or conversion yourself um, to, to what you actually want those fields to be. So I'm now going to cast this to a symbol and I'm going to cast this to a long. And then I'm happy that I have the same result as I did with my CSV load. Um, it's worth mentioning at this point, um, if this seems a little bit uh, complex, um, especially this part and passing in types here, um, this is kind of an older way to do it. We do actually have um, an inbuilt table importer and table exporter function in our free KX developer tool. Um, so I will just quickly show that. I think it's really useful. Um, as I said, it's free, so you can go here and um, if I just look up KX developer, um, you go here, you can download and install this for free. Um, in the section on extract, transform and load, that's what I want to show. So we've got a, a table in, importer. So this is our recommended IDE when you're using KDB. Um, I can even show um, this live, which I might do. I actually have a developer session in the background. So if you want to copy what I'm doing here, you'll just need to follow the, stop, the steps on getting started um, just to do the download and getting logged in for the first time. But once you do, you'll have something that looks like this. Um, you'll set up a workspace. You won't have these Git repos. These are all my Git repos I have. You won't have them by default. So if you if you do have any Git repos you'd like to check, um, check out the space, you can do that pretty easily just doing Git and clone here. Um, but that's this is all really, really well documented on this page. Um, but the bit I want to show live for now is we hit tools and we go to table importer. Um, we'll see we have this pop up. So what this is saying is tell me what file that you want to import is. So I know I want to import a CSV file. Um, then I have to pass the file path so I can actually just search here. Um, I actually know I've got some CSV files in here, which I'm going to use, but I have a TXT file. So depending on, you know, obviously your type of file, you would change that up here. Um, common delimited is fine for this. Um, I can say if I want to skip lines, so say for example, if your first line of the file was a header that you wanted to remove, you could do that in here and remove that. And down below, you can see a quick preview, which is particularly useful if you've got a large data set and you want to quickly see, you know, what's coming through without having to open a huge CSV file that's going to um, crash on you potentially. Oh, I skipped a section. So once we've done the source, sorry, I'll go back again. Once we've done our source and we're happy with that, we can go to next. And then it's given our schema configuration. So you can see here, this is a lot easier than um, the other way I've demonstrated. You can actually um, select your type from here. Um, and it's um, de developer is a lot cleverer. It's going to actually try and guess all the different types. Um, so that is really handy. Um, but do no, do watch out for, um, you know, things like if, if it's going to automatically put it as a real, you might want it as a float, for example. Um, sometimes you might want it as a string um, rather than a symbol, for example. Um, and you can change those here before you finish loading it in. But it's nice that it does do um, some guessing beforehand. Um, so say we're happy with this setup and this schema, we can hit next um, and then it will take the name from the CSV file. Um, if I wanted to call it something else, I could um, overwrite it there. And then you can decide if your table exists already, you could append to the current table of the same name or you could just override it entirely. Um, and you can save that configuration, which means you can then apply this configuration over multiple fly files in one go. So say um, you've got like hundreds of thousands of files, you can then save this as like a function and then you can just run that multiple times. So you don't have to keep going through this table importer step over and over again. And then I'm gonna import. So then I hit finish um, and then I go to process here. 
I'm inside global tables. I've got this new table. So this is my new table. It didn't exist before. Um, and I can see um, my schema. So you can see how this um, IDE is really useful. You get a, you can just go into all of these folders. You can see if you have any dictionaries, if you have functions, if you have tables, variables, views, etc. Um, so I would recommend you download and have a look at this. Um, it is really, really great for beginners, um, in my opinion. Um, we also have a table exporter in the same way. So, um, for example, I've got my new table and if I want to export this, I'm telling it it's a KDB table, I'm going next. And then I'm deciding if I want that to be CSV, KDB, JSON, or in a config file, INI. Um, and then I can decide where I want to put that, the file name, and how I want to delimit that. And um, that would be the equivalent of our um, save command um, that I showed previously. So that's a quick, very quick demo of um, just the importer exporter tool in developer. Um, and just to remind you, yeah, this uh, code.kx.com forward slash developer page um, has got lots more information um, and some demos and outlines, you know, a total workflow of from downloading to getting your code up and running and, and all the different tools. We've got things like an inbuilt debugger, inbuilt unit test, so you can build your own um, tests within um within this tool, which will save you a lot of hassle trying to build a complete unit test framework from scratch. Um, we also have things like linting, um, a visual inspector, which can do a lot of um, powerful graphics um, and inspection of data without you having to have a, another VI or, or another UI platform on top of what you already built. Um, you can do that all from within developer. So um, I won't go into that now, but we do have a much more detailed demo of KX developer um, in other courses we offer. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, um, that is available. So I'll stop there um, and I'll see you in the next um, video when we look at IPC. Thanks very much.